As feared by the CWU, the coalition government has said it's to privatise the Royal Mail following an update of the 2008 Hooper report. Once again, the union faces a fight to keep the post in public ownership. I've come to speak with CWU Head of Communications, Kevin Slocum, to find out more about the union's upcoming campaign. Kevin, what's happening now? What's this latest campaign? Well, the Coalition Government has launched its own version of the Postal Services Bill uh, that we saw last year. And this year, we're waiting to see the details of that bill, but we know they're talking about privatisation of Royal Mail again. They're talking about separation of Royal Mail from Post Office Network. And again, the union's having to launch a campaign, both with the public and with MPs. And as you know, we've been campaigning with Ed Bulls um, to keep the post public. So we're confident that Labour Party opposition will be key to the coalition opposing the, the bill. So it's going to be now for you an extension of keep the post public? It is keep the post public, and it's a bit like Groundhog Day for keep the post public, but it's not the 2009 campaign. The 2010 campaign is different in that. In 2009, Labour government and our campaign was focused on getting Labour backbenchers to understand privatisation was the wrong way forward for a public service. In 2010, we have a much more uh, business-focused government, a much more right-wing government, as we would say, to, that is focused on privatisation as an answer. And the campaign's starting position is really, why is privatisation the dogma answer? Why don't we have a proper debate? Uh, with a blank bit of paper that says, let's look at the problems that Royal Mail and that industry faces and then talk about what the solutions are. And we're trying to engage this government in a debate which says, let's look at the problems, let's look at the solutions. Let's not make a fixed decision at the beginning and go hell-bent on privatisation. As you say, a new government, with that comes new MPs. Now, you're targeting some of those MPs. Why are you doing that? How are you doing that? Well, let's be clear. You know, at the end of the day, this is a privatisation uh, bill. And that means cuts in services, and it means cuts in jobs, and it means it's the wrong way to approach the public in a Royal Mail. So there are 71 MPs who are in marginal constituencies. The Labour Party are second in those seats. They could be seats that could easily be won back by the opposition in the next election. And so we've got to make those MPs understand that there are other economic models, there are better ways of shaping Royal Mail's future, and that privatisation is also not what the British public wants. And it's a case of saying to them, not only is this bad economically, is it the wrong decision to make for the future of a postal service, but it also could be bad for you politically, you know, and bad for you where it really matters in your seat. And so it's about energising the public to go out, campaign with those MPs, campaign clearly around what the British public has said it wants over and over again, which is a publicly owned working postal service, and get those people to change their mind, and get those people to look at alternative models that mean Royal Mail can be successful in a different model. And it's 71 MPs because those are the votes you would need for the bill not to go through? Well, yeah, it's the number of votes, kind of 50% of those you'd need to turn around to win a majority in the House of Commons. And it's about putting pressure on the government, you know, and it's about getting the government to say, to understand, you know, there's nothing like public votes to make the government tap into what the public wants. And sometimes that can be forgotten in the five years before, between elections. And so it's about reminding them that this isn't popular with the British public. And it's about getting the British public to tell them that uh, clearly and then get them to rethink what is unpopular and come back to engage in a debate about the alternative options. So you'll be active in their constituencies and how will you actually communicate with them? Will you write to them? Will you ask to go and see them? How will you engage with them? All of those ways really. We'll engage with them in every way we can. I mean last year we went from John O'Groats to Land's End, you'll recall, and we talked a lot about the universal service. The universal service is still at risk massively from privatisation, but it's those 71 constituencies now that can make the difference. That's the majority you know, that provides the majority of this government to get unpopular legislation through. And we've got to make them understand it is unpopular. You know, the British public don't want it. And if politics is about anything, it's about understanding what, you know, what the public want and delivering popular uh, politics. And so we've got to try to get re-engage the public that we know, poll after poll, time after time, are opposed to selling Royal Mail and get them again to campaign with MPs through whichever means we can get them to talk to them, really. Yes, because you've taken the temperature, haven't you? Not just of your members, but of the British people. So you're reminding the MPs and anybody you can that this would be an unpopular move. Yeah, we've taken the temperature over and over again, and that temperature is always the same. You know, the British public don't want to sell their raw mail, don't want to sell their postal service. Only last week, we did a poll, a YouGov poll, 
uh, YouGov Care Data poll where a majority of Tory voters and the majority of Lib Dem voters don't want to sell Royal Mail, and that's really, really important. This isn't just about you know Labour voters, this isn't just about trade unions. The British public, in all its forms, whoever they vote for, don't want to sell Royal Mail. And 61% of Tory voters themselves said they think the service will worsen, and more importantly, they think the service will get more expensive. Uh, and so that universal service, that one price goes anywhere that we've talked on and on about, not only on CW TV but elsewhere in terms of uh, the CW campaign, is crucial to this, you know, and the public want it protected. I was going to say that is the special part for you, that, that universal part that one price goes anywhere, because it is a complicated issue and there are many parts, aren't there, to, to the post in Britain. Why is that the most important bit for you, the one price goes anywhere? Why is it top of your tree? Because that's what the Royal Mail Service is about and what it's been about for 360 years, you know. It's about the fact that the post is a communication service that the British public can enjoy at an affordable price. And where you see services being privatised around the world, you see the price go up. You know, and you see it more and more difficult for people to access a universal postal service. And CW members and employees of Royal Mail and the Post Office recognise that that's important to them. They've got a public service ethos. You know, they want to deliver for the public. And it's important also to remember that the Post Office network, those individual post offices around the country, of which there are a lot less now than there were 20 years ago, are crucial to this. If you separate Royal Mail from the Post Office network, which this government intends to do, those post offices will be at bigger risk than ever. Because 50% of their work, at least, is predicated on Royal Mail's business, on mail business. And if Royal Mail isn't linking them, they'll have the ability to go to a cheaper, cheaper operator. And post office, the heart of the Tory and Liberal manifesto was save your post office, save your local shop, save your local post office, save your local church, save your local pub. You know, those post offices won't be saved if mail's business is separated away from them and taken to a cheaper provider. It's going to be tough for you, this campaign, isn't it? Because this new coalition government have got quite firm, strong, dynamic answers if you want this service saved, you'll have to pay for it by having another service diminished. Mm -hmm. Quite a strong argument. Do you feel you're ready to counter that? I think what we are ready for is that we know there's got to be a better economic argument. You know, I think that they understand that, you know, they make this argument that are you going to spend money on a mail sort machine or are you going to spend money on a on an NHS scanner? And clearly everyone's going to go for the, for the latter. But we also know that there are two things, aren't there? There's an economic situation in Britain now which makes people think differently but there's still a need for a postal service and a want you know a will for people to have a postal service and so it's about getting an economic solution that allows that still to happen without putting the burden on the taxpayer and that's where we are that's where we're trying to get the debate going with the Tories and the Lib Dems and everyone else and it's about a model that says you know change the treasury rules let the Royal Mail borrow money on the money markets it's about solving the pensions crisis which could throw up to 300 million pounds into into the business annually. It's about changing regulation. You know, that regulation, something that you'll hear postal workers, postmen and women on the street moan about every day, where they're delivering letters for other mail providers at a low cost to them, and they're providing the universal service, the expensive bit of the post, and they're creaming off the best work. That's not fair and it's not right. And we've got to get this government to understand that. And that putting regulation right, along with the other changes, can create an economic product, an economic environment where the Royal Mail can still be successful in the public sector. People can still have their universal service, but they can still have an economically viable Royal Mail. What do you say, Kevin, to people who say that the, the British Post Office can't survive without investment from the private sector? I say they're wrong. Uh, the truth is that um, the Post Office can exist in the public sector, but it needs to be able to modernise, which we've supported as an agreement to modernise, and it needs investment, but it doesn't need shares, it doesn't need to be sold. You know. The company should have the ability to go and borrow money in the money markets in the same way as anyone else, in the same way it's been you know, allowed for other public sector organisations. It should be able to invest that back in the company. And yes, it'll pay an interest on that, but the biggest threat to Royal Mail's modernisation is taking more profit out of the company. You know, That money's got to be made available to further modernise, to take the business forward. And I think there are models and I think there is a real opportunity for Royal Mail to succeed, still with public ownership, but with greater flexibility and greater freedom to borrow and, and invest. Now, this government, of course, say the taxpayer should not pay for the post office. Hard to engage in dialogue with them when you, you disagree so vehemently. Yeah, and it's an interesting debate because, you know, in the, today's economic situation, everyone else is getting cuts, but it isn't the case of having to go to the taxpayer. You know, the company has got a modernisation plan now which will take it back to profitability within two to three years. We're supporting that plan. We're working with the company on it. And then it's how you go forward after that, and that's when we talk about, you know, being able to borrow in the market, and having commercial freedom to do so. And so there are still lots of ways Royal Mail can be successful. And it's still weathered the recession better than its competitors. 
And that's an important point to consider. And you want your activists to go out and to, to talk about this and to get people engaged in this debate, don't you? Yep, we run the regional campaign on the Summit One constituencies. We want all our activists engaged in it. We want them all lobbying their MP. We want them all getting the public involved, the media involved, getting as many people as possible, getting this campaign out on the streets, get people to understand what's happening, understand the risk to the universal service, and get them lobbying their MP. And again, build up massive public support for a massively publicly supported Royal Mail. And you're the union to do it, you think? What about pulling in other unions with you? Yeah, I mean, the TUC unanimously carried support for the union's policy. So we'd be expecting support from all other unions. You know, other unions represent postal workers. They represent other workers in post offices. They represent people who use the service. Small businesses, you know, are affected by the change to the universal service. So we're trying to build a coalition of as many organisations as we can. The Women's Institute has signed in. You know, the Federation of Small Businesses are now talking to us about how it would improve uh, services for their members. So we're building a widespread coalition. Coalition's the uh, key word of the day. And, uh, you know, we're trying to build as much wide support as we can to take the campaign forward. You know, it doesn't sound like Groundhog Day at all. There's, there's a lot to do, a lot of fresh stuff to do with, with a fresh government. Well, it's a good point, Emma. You know, it's important that people understand the difference between where we were with Labour backbenchers and where we are today with a coalition MPs and a coalition majority. And it's a fresh campaign. It's new and we've got to get out and do the work. Kevin Slocum, thank you. Thanks, Emma.